Okay, so we've looked at some simple interactivity between objects, and in this lesson we're going to try and tackle some slightly more advanced uh, interactivity before we go on to the example files. So I'm going to whisk through here and create a little layout. I'm going to go in my gallery, and I'm going to select the blue pill button. This time I'm going to shrink it down because I'm going to make a few of them. So I'll have to double click on it and take the text size down accordingly. In this case I'll go down to about 11 point. That should be good. Then I'm going to control D to create a few of these little buttons here. And I'm going to, let's see, I'll put them about there. And then I'm actually going to select them and I'm going to align them and distribute them. Oops. I have the page to page icon selected here. So I'll go ahead and align them to the page here as a group. And then I'm going to move them back down. Okay, so we've got three buttons here. And I'm going to click on the first button and change the text to say gray. On the second button to say brown. And on the third button to say blue. Okay. Now I'm going to set up an image object by clicking on this little image icon and selecting one of these backgrounds. In this case we may as well select the first one in the abstract gallery which is gray and it will correspond to our first button. I'll press OK. As you can see it's way too huge for the stage so I'm going to drag on the corner and just drag it here into the center and I'm going to align it to the page actually. There we go. And we're ready to go. All we need is a label object for that a little bit of extra functionality, and we're ready to go. I'm going to click on this little letter A in the icon bar to create a label object. I'm going to be sure that it's center aligned, and I'm just going to go ahead and type in gray, because that's going to be our default state here with the first button. Press OK, bring it down here, and align it to the stage. OK, we're ready to go. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create some advanced functionality in which these buttons communicate not only with themselves, but with all three of the other objects. So let's go ahead and just jump right in. We'll click on this gray button. We'll double click it. And then we'll take from the Actions tab, this little area, the Add Action button. Okay, now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the uh, image interactivity. So from the drop down menu here, we're selecting Image, Load. Okay, so double click the Image Load button, or Action, sorry. And from the File Name area here, click that little ellipsis at the end of the line here and we will select this gray background again. So what it's going to do is restore itself when that button is clicked. So this is the one that ends in 100 in the abstract gallery. It's the first one in my arrangement here and it looks like this. And we'll press OK. Press Finish. And now we're going to move on to the next level of interactivity. This button, when it's clicked, is going to restore the text of the label object to say gray. So we'll select the label object from the Choose a Category pull down and we will select the label set text action and in between the quotations here making sure that we retain those quotation marks we're going to set the text to say gray and it's going to be set for the label one object okay so we'll press finish and then the final layer of interactivity here is going to be with the other buttons and with itself so we're going to go to the add action and then from the pull down menu button actions and we're going to select the set enabled um, action here. We'll press next and we are going to leave it set to itself as you'll see there's the choice of the three buttons here but we'll leave it set to button one and we will change the enabled field here to say false. Okay, So it's going to disable itself when it gets clicked. That means that basically it's going to restore the gray image, it's going to change the label object text to say gray and then it's going to disable itself. <coughs> so let's press finish and we're going to drag over that last action to copy it. We'll right click on it, select copy, and then we're actually going to click down here and right click again and select paste and we'll do that twice. Now we'll just manually go in here and type uh, and switch these labels here to be for button 2 and button 3 and we will switch the state to be true. Okay, so now what this is essentially going to do is when you click on this button, it's going to disable itself and enable the other two. Okay, so these actions are set up, and all we need to do is right click and drag over them to highlight them like that. And then we'll right click again and we will select copy. 
and we will press OK. Now we can go on to the next button, the brown button, and we'll double click it, and in the Actions tab we'll just right click and select Paste. Okay. Now all we have to do is juggle around a couple of these actions. So we'll double click the image load action to bring this dialog back up, and we'll select our brown image, which is the one that ends in the suffix 965 in the Abstracts Gallery. As you can see it right here, we'll press OK and we will make sure that it's still set to image 1 and we'll press OK. Now we'll come into our actions here and manually edit them a bit. We'll select the label text and change it to brown. Additionally, we'll change the disabled button here to be label button 2 and switch button 1 down here. So we've switched the number 2 and the number 1 between those two action lines and press OK and then we'll move on to the blue button. We still have that same code in our clipboard so we can paste it here into the actions area of our final button. Again we'll double click the image load action and we will point it at our blue image which is the one that ends in the suffix 961 in the abstracts gallery. Okay, And we'll press OK and then we will again switch our text here to say blue this time and again we will switch the button labels here so that button 3 is being disabled and button 1 is being enabled. We'll press OK and we're finished our advanced interactivity. If we preview this project, we'll see that we pressed F5 to preview. We'll see that what we've got is our three buttons, our label object, and our background. So it shows our gray background and it displays that it is a gray background. Now in this case, I didn't bother to uh, disable this button right off. I could have, but uh, for the purposes of demonstration, we just moved along. If I click on that gray button, you'll notice it's now disabled. If we click on one of the other buttons, you'll notice that not only does it re-enable, if you like, the gray button, it disables itself and it changes the image to match the label object. So when we click on the brown button, we get the brown image with the brown label. When we click on the blue button, we get the blue image with the blue label, and so forth for the gray image, etc. As well, each button disables itself as we click on it, and it will not re-enable until we've clicked on one of the other two buttons. So this is some advanced object interactivity and as you can see in this case these buttons are actually communicating not only with themselves but with three other objects at any given time. Well four if you count the uh, two button objects as unique objects. So this demonstrates some really advanced object interactivity and actually it would be very easy in this case to also set it so the label object or and or the image object interacted backwards with the buttons as well. But in this case we just did it this way for the sake of expediency. But you can see that the level of interactivity is not limited by anything other than your imagination. And if you're going to combine these things with functions and so forth, you can create some extremely profound interactivity between your objects. If you're curious about functions, I encourage you to go to www.speedytraining.com and check out the training CD on tables and functions and data handling. And now we'll move on to our example projects and work through a variety of examples and hopefully we'll be able to really bring home uh, the concepts from these last few lessons in a meaningful way.